Hello and welcome to this Elucidine webinar. Here we're going to review the main points from the 2013 joint guidance of the EAA and the EMQN. Over the next 15 minutes we're going to take a look at the Y chromosome in relation to microdeletion testing, how the current guidance recommends for microdeletion testing and how the Elucidine MFI kits offer an ideal solution for this form of testing. The guidance was originally published in Andrology in 2013 and replaces the previous 2004 version of the guidance. For those of you who are interested, a full copy is available electronically at the web address shown here. I'd now like to take a few moments to go into the background and the premise of this report. Since 1999, the EAA and EMQN have supported improvements in the quality of diagnostic testing both through the publication of laboratory guidance and secondly by offering external quality assurance schemes. The 2013 guidance represents two decades of clinical testing and summarises the known clinical novelties of the Y chromosome in respect to microdeletion testing. Not only do the guidelines recommend the most up-to-date information on testing and reporting of microdeletion, but they also outline some of the answers to clinical novelties in regards to why microdeletion testing have been discovered over the last two decades. And most importantly, they have resulted in an improvement to the diagnostic service provided. But why do we test for microdeletions? After Kleinfelter syndrome, which is characterized by a male having at least one additional X chromosome, Y chromosomal microdeletions are the second most common cause of male infertility. Microdeletions occur in 1 in 4,000 men in the general population. However, the frequency of microdeletions in males with infertility is significantly higher. This can range from between 2 and 10%, depending on the populations that a laboratory are looking at. It's frequently highest in males with azoospermia and also high in men with oligospermia. Importantly, the 2013 guidance also provides clarification that the postulated fourth region AZFD does not in fact exist and therefore laboratories should not use additional markers to look for this. Now let's take a look at the Y chromosomal microdeletion region in more detail. The complete physical map and sequence of the male specific region of the Y chromosome has been available since 2003 in which three classes of sequence have been found X transposed, X degenerate and ampliconic sequences. Our current knowledge suggests that the male-specific region contains 78 protein-coding genes, of which 60 of these are ampliconic in their sequence, and which code for only 27 proteins. It's widely accepted that the complete AZF deletion arises from non-allelic homologous recombination, which takes place between highly homologous repeat sequences, and leads to the loss of genetic material in this region. Considering the structure of the male-specific region, a small number of deletion patterns have been elucidated, which have clinical relevance to male infertility. Three discrete regions were originally characterised by mapping of the male-specific region and denoted AZF, A, B and C. However, as can be seen from the diagram here, the 2013 guidance expands on this model and includes overlapping regions of AZF, B and C and further suggests that at least three different deletion patterns account for the observed full or partial deletions in the AZFCB region. Complete deletions of AZF, A, B and C regions, as well as overlapping and sub-deletions, have all been shown to have variable phenotypic and histological effects on spermatogenic production. And subsequently, the likelihood of successful testicular sperm extraction for use in ICSI is also highly variable, depending on the exact region that has been deleted. As we can see, microdeletion testing is part of the routine diagnostic workup for males who have a semen concentration of less than 5 million sperm per mil. However, many patients with oligospermia may have a semen concentration of less than 2 million sperm per mil. The first step is to carry out basic microdeletion testing, employing the six recommended markers from the 2013 guidance, which we'll look at further in the presentation. Upon detection of either a single or a dual marker deletion, additional extension analysis should be carried out to verify the deletion breakpoint site more thoroughly. Unlike the 2004 guidance, the 2013 guidance goes on to specify 11 additional recommended markers for the elucidation of the breakpoints. 
It's this additional tier of testing that significantly reduces the chances of diagnostic misinterpretation and provides the clinician with a more complete picture of the realistic outcome for the patient. A couple of other points to note in relation to the guidance are that the Y chromosome microdeletion should be performed by multiplex PCR amplification employing genomic DNA and should include the marker ZFX, ZFY as an internal control. Alongside this, we should run a normal male and a normal female and in addition, a water blank control should be running parallel with each of the multiplex reactions. Now let's take a look at the recommended markers from the 2013 guidance. As we've already discussed, the 2013 guidance recommends six specific markers for the detection of AZF, A, B or C, which will enable detection of around 95% of all deletions. Adoption of this favourite set of markers is strongly recommended by the EAA and EMQN as it allows for a laboratory standardisation and a good comparison of laboratory performance. Additionally, in light of novel data on genotype and phenotype correlations, the use of extension analysis when an AZF deletion is detected is also now routinely recommended. Importantly, the EAA and EMQN have recommended that kits that include additional markers do not improve the sensitivity of testing and may in fact complicate interpretation of results and therefore it is recommended that these kits should not be used in practice. At this point, I'd like to briefly touch on the available EQA scheme. The EAA and EMQN strongly recommend annual participation in a quality assurance scheme and in their experience, laboratories participating in these schemes have seen far fewer errors in their reporting. In fact, we've seen a decrease from 8 to 2% in reporting error. Many of the current interpretation errors result as an inclusion of additional markers and a deviation from the 2013 guidance. In addition, it is recommended that individuals undergoing fertility investigations should also be carrier typed and have the CFTR status established. On that note, I'd like to take a moment to highlight how the Elucigene MFI kit, when used in combination with Elucigene CFU2, provides an ideal combination for a simple, easy to use and easy to interpret diagnostic approach. In response to the increasing pressures faced by laboratories to maintain a broad range of diagnostic assays, Elucigene Diagnostics have developed a purpose-built CE IVD marked male infertility assay. The male infertility kit detects sex chromosomal aneuploidy and Y microdeletions in a single tube using the six recommended markers for the detection of microdeletions in region AZFA, B or C. In addition, a second kit called MFIY Plus is available for breakpoint analysis of patients who have been shown to have a deletion which uses the 11 additional recommended markers from the guidance. When used in combination with CFEU2, this provides an ideal combination for male infertility screening. For further information regarding these products, you can visit our website, elucigene.com, or gain further information from your local elucigene representative. I'd now like to take a brief moment to summarise the key points from this webinar. Why microdeletion testing, karyotyping, and CFTR diagnosis all form part of the routine genetic workup for males undergoing infertility investigations. The EAA and EMQN 2013 guidance recommends a two-stage algorithm for Y-chromosomal microdeletion testing. The first stage uses six specific markers for the detection of AZF, A, B or C microdeletions and the use of additional markers is not recommended as this may lead to erroneous interpretation of the results. The second stage uses 11 recommended markers for the confirmation of breakpoint analysis. As we've shown here, the Elucigene MFI and MFIY Plus kits, when used in combination with CFEU2, provide a fast, simple and easy to interpret single laboratory diagnostic workflow for male infertility testing. And finally, I'd like to thank you for taking the time to listen to this Elucigene webinar.